Welcome to the Tesla Economist. Please hit the thumbs up and remember to subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and talk to me on Patreon. We seem to be continually told that a robot taxi can replace the equivalent of five ICE vehicles. But what does that even mean? Is that figure a minimum or even an average? For every additional robot taxi added into the fleet, there are five fewer ICE cars that need to be on the road. This is what we are inferring. Let's see if we can work this out and go through exactly how this is the case. The thing is that although a robo taxi may be able to work almost 24 hours a day, there are still only certain times when people actually want to travel in a car, which is why one of the first rebuttals we often hear is how can it operate during rush hour traffic? This is a very fair question. This is when there would be the maximum stress level. All these people driving their cars into the city from their suburbs only to park them stationary for likely the whole day and to use the vehicle again to return home. The entire point of robo taxis is that instead of that vehicle being parked all day in the city, it could instead be out around the city generating fares. Except how do these people get to the city in the first place? Well, they drove. Their car is already in the city. Therefore, they may not need to use a robo taxi. However, if you live within the city, then it may be a lot more convenient traveling around in robo taxis rather than driving especially when it comes to parking, obviously depending on the city. What if you live and work within a city then? And in rush hour, then the trip may only take you 15 to 30 minutes to get to work. A robo taxi may be able to get about 10 people or so to work within the city for rush hour if that was the case. This is an effective use of robo taxis. It would not be so feasible for a robo taxi to go back and forth out of the city as it will lose too much of peak demand. I'm sure the AI will be as efficient as possible in getting as many people to work as fast as possible in the attempt at replacing as many cars going to work. Unlike an Uber driver, it won't just take the fare that best suits them, but instead what collectively is the most efficient overall for all taxis. Now every city is different and they are not all as dense as New York and they don't all have as many cars as Los Angeles. Depending on the level of rush hour, robo taxis will be more effective in certain cities. Why just cities? Why not average sized towns too? Rush hour may not be as bad in towns, people have less far to travel to work, and it takes less time. A robo taxi could be working more efficiently, picking up more fares when compared to a busy city. Not all robo taxis will have an equal number of fares, depending on the location and the purpose. Robo taxis aren't likely going to be the only form of travel. I can't see private car ownership going away anytime soon. This is merely a great alternative to what is available now. It costs less than the bus and is a really nice car with great entertainment. But clearly there are still going to be lots of towns and consumers that robo taxis are not a suitable replacement for car ownership. But the point is that there are going to be places where robo taxis are going to be able to operate more efficiently. Perhaps each taxi is capable of replacing 10 cars in some towns, but only three cars in others. What's even the point of them anyway, aside from the consumer to save money, how does it align with the mission? Well, it's not that robo taxis necessarily reduce the amount of cars required, it's that they are reducing the number of ICE cars and replacing them with electric driven vehicles. An Uber can also remove cars off the road too, but the Uber itself of course is still driving around burning fossil fuels. Therefore, robo taxis become a faster way of replacing more ICE driving from the roads. Of course, fewer cars needing to be manufactured is likely also better for the environment and thus the mission. All right, so how about we run through a day in the life scenario of a robo taxi in a town, perhaps with a population of around 100,000 or so. Rush hour is from around 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. So during that period, how many people could one taxi take to work? There is of course peak rush hour too. So before and after the peak rush hour, a taxi should be able to do trips quicker. Perhaps the first trip starts at 6 a.m. and they arrive at work in the city at around 6.30 a.m. By 6.40, the taxi has a new fare it's someone else on the way to work, but they're also picking up their friend on the way. Remember, this is rush hour, which is also peak robo taxi demand. There will be minimal time without passengers. These passengers might be dropped off at 7 a.m. as the taxi was going the opposite direction of rush hour and the journey took less. Then another pickup almost instantly at 7.05, a trip to near the city and dropped off at 7.30. It wasn't so far. Of course, AI is controlling the whole thing and doing what it can to be as close to the next fare as possible and all running as efficient as possible rather than humans deciding what trip is best for them. 7.40, the next passenger, only a few blocks this time with a 7.50 drop off. Again, another passenger almost instantly at 7.55 who just wants to go to a different part of the city. It's not too far, but traffic is building up now and does take a bit of time. 
they dropped off at 8.40. Again, a new passenger within five minutes, but we're still in peak rush hour. This passenger just puts on Netflix, and as a robotaxi rolls slowly across town, finally arrives at 9.30. The robotaxi has to drive another 15 minutes to pick up the next passenger, and then they arrive at work at 10.15. That is the end of rush hour. It would obviously be hard to assess just how many robotaxi rides there might be during rush hour, but I feel like this scenario I just played out could be quite close, at least for some places. For cities or routes where you are stuck in rush hour an hour each way, then robotaxis would not be as effective. However, in this same city, there may be some people travelling to work who can still benefit. But anyway, how many cars did this replace? We replaced seven trips to work, and one of them was pooling, so it was actually potentially eight cars. In smaller cities, this might be considerably lower. Perhaps there are optimal sized cities for this at first. I think a lot of rush hour will end up being routine for most passengers. Every day they pretty much take the same routes at the same time. Tesla will be able to gather all this information about each user and group them into algorithms to re-expect pickups and plan other routes better. I don't see rubber taxis as some way to replace all driving. I think it will supplement what is on offer now. Just like Uber, only on a larger scale. Some people will be able to give up car ownership and depend on robo taxis, whereas others who didn't have a car previously and used to bus are now able to take robo taxis instead. Anyway, this is talking about replacing car ownership. In that scenario played out, these people using robo taxis would have ditched their cars in lieu of robots. It's not necessarily just about getting people to replace their cars, but mainly to replace their driving too. Even if they drive into a city in rush hour traffic, the same person might end up taking robo taxis around the city during the day as it's more convenient. It's not binary, either you replace your car and take robo taxis or you don't. You can still take robo taxis as a car owner. So as for these other people who didn't replace their cars, well perhaps they are at least replacing some of their driving around in ICE vehicles. Perhaps this is what it literally meant by the replacement of five cars. It might actually mean the equivalent of driving five cars. Tesla will make the robo taxis appealing and make people want to give up their car if they end up being so convenient, and if they end up becoming so low cost, a lot of people would just do it. For some people it might be a good saving, perhaps they can go on an overseas holiday once a year with these savings. And for some people that's more important than owning a car. We all have different priorities, some people really don't care about owning a car, or what car it is, or driving in general. I use Uber so much more than I used to use taxis. It's that much cheaper to be driven around, and that much more convenient than a taxi. Well, what about if robo taxis are even more convenient, even lower cost, and you don't have to share the taxi with a stranger and can just relax and watch Netflix? There will be so much demand for them. And for a lot of people, it will end up being a lower cost than owning any vehicle. Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and talk to me on Patreon.